A word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want to rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another PCB video. I love these. So I've been I've been on a roll making random uh, PCB projects and whatnot. Just anything I can think of that I think would be interesting. Anyway, let's just open this up and I'll show you my newest project. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is a random project I thought up. So I recently got a uh, Sony Micro Hi-Fi um, like a stereo system and it, I got it for I think six bucks which is absolutely insane it's dirt cheap it works fully but it did not come with a remote so I thought to myself uh, there is an IR library for the um, the Arduino the Arduino Uno or whatever the 328p so I thought to myself self why don't we just make a remote so that's what this is basically it is it's actually a little wider than I thought it'd be, but um, yeah, it does fit fairly comfortably in the hand. And you can um, use surface mount buttons or you can use uh, through hole ones just bending the leads over. And the idea was to have a 328. <clears throat> I designed a power switch. So originally this was going to be um, powered off of a CR2032, uh, which which will work fine if um, you put it to sleep, but say you want to, I don't know, if you want to do something else. Um, I added a power switch just in order to disconnect the battery, just in case while you're tinkering around with it. Uh, so this will work um, either with or without a crystal. I already tested the software that I wrote, and it has a uh, ICSP header so you can easily reprogram the chip. And um, a couple pins broken out so that you can put a... Um, like a through hole uh, IR receiver in there so that you can actually program this, write a program that you can train all the buttons um, to work with any kind of remote basically. So this is a infinitely reprogrammable um, IR remote basically and I just randomly called it remote Duino. I'm sure there's some other commercial product or some other project someone did where they called theirs remote Duino or something but whatever it's just something I came up on the spot with. Not too clever. But anyway, I added a, uh, a little LED to show you when a button's pressed. And um, basically the IR LED just goes here. I added the option, if you want to run this at a higher voltage than the 3 volt battery, of using a transistor and a current limiting uh, resistor and whatnot. So you can actually drive this much harder. Um, the idea being you could get pretty great range out of that. And I added the option of just put a solder blob in order to um, directly drive it from the, uh, the microprocessor pin if you don't care that much about range. Anyway, let's get to soldering one of these up and uh, see how it works. Load up a test program too.
Okay, so we are all soldered up. I um I flashed my firmware to the um, AT Mega 3328P. I inserted a battery. I made a small oopsie. I actually <laughs> had the battery holder backwards. So to compensate for that, instead of flipping it around so it doesn't match the silk screen, I just flipped the battery upside down and it works. Um, obviously that's not ideal. I'll have to fix that in the final board revision. Uh, but I have everything programmed up. I used a um, an IR library um, that basically um, has multiple protocols set up for like RC5, RC6, and SIRC, which is Sony's protocol. I have my uh, Sony Microsystem here, and uh, not all the buttons work. I um, to get the button codes, I actually Googled um, like Sony CD player SIRC protocol. And I uh, came up with a number of pages, and some of them have conflicting information as to what button codes go to what. I guess Sony wasn't so consistent. Some of the buttons work, some of them don't. The power button, unfortunately, does not work. Uh, so if I just go in and switch this to CD, it'll scan the CD. So I can just hit play now. You can see the LED lit up when I hit the button, and it basically wakes up every time you hit a button. It uses a pin change interrupt. It wakes up the processor. It um it sends the code, and then it lights up the LED when it's sending the code, and then it shuts off. It goes back to sleep, basically. So right now, the processor is actually sleeping. You can see it's playing, and I'm able to skip through the different tracks. I'm able to pause, play. And um, I can even stop, and I can eject the disc. And there you go. Still have to stop. Yeah, so, so far I have, um, I have play, pause, eject disc, stop, rewind, and fast forward. Well, next track and previous track working. Volume up and down, for some reason, don't work with the codes that I found. Uh, basically, to find the codes, I googled um, Sony SIRC pro uh, CD remote code protocol or something like that, and there's a number of pages, and I think between different Sony systems, they, there is sort of a standard, but some of the codes I found conflicting information, and I tried different values for like volume and power, and I wasn't able to find ones that worked. So I'm actually going to have to uh, do some more experimentation to find out. I do not have the original controller for this the remote, so unless if I want to spend 10 or 15 bucks to buy it just to find the code so I can program them in here, which is kind of counterproductive, I'm just going to do some more research and see if I can find the codes or um, some more documentation on this. But yeah, as you can see, it works perfectly. Uh, the range is about, I want to say, four or five feet Um that could be because this is a used battery that's um, not perfectly powered. Um, so I'm guessing either that or if I decrease, there's a current limiting resistor uh, in series with the IR LED. I think if I decrease that value, because I actually calculated it based off of 5 volts, but right now this is running off of 3 volts. So I'm going to have to compensate for that. But yeah, as is, uh, it works uh, pretty well, actually. I'm pretty happy with that. And um, we're going to take a look at uh, current measurements now. I'm going to hook this up to multimeter and uh, see exactly what current uh, we're getting for the standby and then calculate how long the battery should last. Okay, so let's measure some, um, some current for standby and operation. So I'm just going to use this piece of um, anti-static bag to insulate the battery um, so that I can actually take the measurement because we have to put the probes in series with the battery to do so one side going to the battery, the other to the terminal. On the milliamp range, uh, hopefully get this in shot. So when it's in uh, standby, you can see it's kind of oscillating around 0 0.01. I'm kind of too high in the scale, but you can see when I do press the button, it goes up to about uh, 3.8. It looks like I, I saw a peak. Um, when it actually sends the code 3.5 something like 3.7 4.2 so around probably worst case like about four or five milliamps uh, when it's actually sending the code itself let's uh, step this down and see what the actual standby current is 
So there, you can see it is hovering around 15 or 16 microamps. Obviously, when I press the button, it kind of goes out of scale. Um, oops. Yeah, 15 or 16. Let me just put it on 200 microamps and see. Yeah, there we go. 14. I think actually my finger was touching, so maybe um, it was measuring leakage current through my skin. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, so about 1.9. So let's just call it 2. Um, on average, about 2 um, microamps it's drawing. Um, we'll just take that as a nominal value. And uh, let's just grab a calculator and do some quick calculation. Okay, so... Say um, an average CR22, uh, 2032 is about 220 uh, milliamp hours, so that'll be 220E um, negative 3 in amp hours. And we measured uh, 2 microamps, uh, the quiescent draw in standby, so that'll be 2E negative 6. So this is basically assuming we can extract 100% of the energy, so this is not going to be a good indicator. Um, so theoretically, the maximum ideal draw would be something like 110,000 hours uh, divided by 24 to give me the days and divided by 365 to give me the years. Basically, 12.56 uh, 12 uh, standby years. So basically, according to that, this battery would run for 12 and a half years. Um, that's not a very good approximation because as the battery voltage uh, drops, this is assuming the voltage doesn't change and it's able to draw a constant current over the entire range. Uh, that's probably not likely the case. I'm going to guess we're going to get about maybe 60 to 70% of that. So even if it's, you know, 60% of that, that's still about seven and a half years. And that's taking into account any extra, the internal leakage current of the battery and all that. So that's if you left it in standby, you never pressed a button, you just inserted a fresh battery and then just let it sit there for like seven, eight years. So I would say that's not bad in terms of standby. Most of your remotes you expect maybe to last like a year or two uh, with the, the, um, the batteries just in standby. So already it's looking pretty good. Let me pull up, I found a website. Um, we can plug in the numbers that we measured. We measured like 3.5 um, milliamps when you're pressing a button. There's actually a website I found that can calculate um, if you have a device that's sometimes in sleep and sometimes in awake, it, it'll estimate what the battery life is. Okay, so this is the site. Um, it's, it's, in, it's a company, I guess, called Organ Embedded. And um, they have a couple papers, data sheets, and some other tools that you can use. One of them is this battery life calculator. And so here we can plug in 220 milliamp hours of the battery capacity. Uh, we measured about uh, 2 microamps, which is 0 0.002 milliamps. The consumption we said was about, let's just leave it at 3.5 milliamps. Uh, that seemed to be an average value when it's awake and actually sending the IR pulse. Uh, let's just say you click the button 20 times per hour, every hour, 24-7. That's actually pretty unrealistic, but this is like an absolute worst case uh, scenario, I guess. And my code, I currently set it when I wake up to send the pulse. It takes approximately 500 milliseconds. Uh, so if we hit calculate, you can see the life would be about 1.82 years, which is actually really reasonable. And I don't think any normal human being would actually click the button 20 times an hour, every hour, continuously, 24 hours a day. Um, maybe more realistically would be like five times an hour or something like that. In which case, the battery uh, life jumps to about just under five years, 4.82 years. So all in all, I got to say that actually worked out really well. Um, Really surprised that I was able to get the current that low. So um, I'll link the code down below. Um, well, I'll probably create a hackaday.io page on this project. And I'll upload my code and the board files there as well if you want to make one of these yourself. Um, 
I actually learned quite a bit. I've never used, I've usually low power modes on PIC microprocessors, but I haven't played around with them for the AT Mega. So there's, um, I, I commented the hell out of my code. So you should be able to uh, dissect, you know, every instruction that I wrote. I didn't use a library for the actual low power portion. I did um, low level register writing. So you can see line by line what I'm writing, why I'm writing. I ended up using the lowest power mode that this chip can um, can use. I use the um, internal uh, 8 megahertz uh, oscillator. Uh, if you decide to use the 16 megahertz external oscillator, uh, your current consumption will be higher. So I wanted to get it down, so I opted. I put pads there to put an oscillator, but I decided to actually go with the internal after testing that the IR still works. Um, because when you mess with frequencies, you have to redefine things. But yeah, everything works. Um, I'm really actually happy with this project. I'm probably going to actually go and um, see if I can uh, change the codes and get this to work with my TV because this would be a sweet little remote um, just to change channels on my TV and whatnot in case we lose the other remote. I added a ton of buttons that actually are programmed uh, not to do anything. They're just sending the code, but I think they're sending all zeros. Uh, so I have extra buttons all down here that are just labeled A through F. And uh, my idea is actually I soldered a header here and a um, RX TX serial port header as well. So you can um, plug in a like an IR receiver. And I'm planning on in the future uh, modifying the software so that um, like if you press and hold the button or something like that, it'll go into program mode. And um, you can just point an actual remote at it um, with the sensor attached and it'll read the code and then program that button. It'll map it to that code so you can make this infinitely reprogrammable which would be freaking awesome anyway this was actually a pretty quick project and it was entirely inspired by the fact that i found that um sony stereo system for like seven six or seven bucks at a thrift store and it didn't come with the remote and i thought you know it'd be cool just make a remote anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed this video i have a ton of other projects coming up um that hopefully you guys will enjoy as well and i'll see you in the next one Bye.